One month on from former Egyptian President Morsi's removal from power, and Edward Coughlin of Business Monitor International is back on the phone with Dukascopy TV to discuss aid pledges, budget deficits, and concerns of a regional spread. Edward, thank you for joining us once again. Firstly, can you walk us through Egypt's current state of play, and subsequently, what level of financial stress we're seeing at present? Well, financially, the, uh, the country is actually doing quite well. The stock market improved after Morsi was overthrown. Uh, that, uh, that bounce has been sustained. The CDS has um, come down. It's ticked a little bit higher, but it's, it's a lot lower than it was under the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, while there's still a lot of political difficulties, um, at the moment, the financial markets have responded quite well to the interim government. Um, and we expect that to be the case for the coming months. However, by the end of the year, um, we expect the issues to become a lot worse. Uh, we don't think the interim government will reform subsidies. That's a key drain in the economy. It accounts for about a quarter of the budget. Um, so at the moment, the situation is looking pretty good. But by the end of the year, I think we'll be in a situation that was similar to what it was like under the Muslim Brotherhood. Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates and Kuwait have all pledged aid in order to prop up Egypt's import industry, ensuring Egypt should have enough foreign exchange reserves to provide import cover in the coming months. How likely are these pledges to be called upon? Yes, about $12 billion has been pledged. Um, around half of that has already been deposited in the central bank. Um, it's almost certain that these, uh, this money will be required. Egypt was running perilously close to three months of the import cover. Um, it's around 14, it's 14.9 billion dollars in June. That's now gone to about 18.8 billion, um, which is needed to cover food and fuel imports. Also, there is the foreign reserves are important because it can stabilise the currency. That has done so. It's stabilised around seven Egyptian pounds to the dollar. But again, we expect while the depreciation it will stop for the time being, by the end of the year to resume, it will probably reach about 7.4. Egyptian pounds to the dollar by the end of the year. This aid is a clear sign of shifting policies amongst the wealthy Gulf nations towards Egypt. Is this action indicative of concerns of a regional spread? Oh yes, definitely. It's a, uh, you can't underestimate how important Egypt is culturally. It's also got the largest population in the Middle East. It's one of the largest economies. So events in Egypt do have a knock-on impact in the rest of the region. Now UAE, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia are all fearful the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, or fearful of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, lest a similar popular organization take power in their countries. Um, one exception to that is Qatar. Qatar had supported the Muslim Brotherhood, um, but the setbacks in Egypt, as well as their support for the rebels in Syria, has mean that, that they're probably going to take a back seat in terms of regional diplomacy. There is the possibility of further aid from um, the Gulf countries for the interim government, perhaps around September, October of this year, uh, but they can't rely on it forever, so at some point they're going to have to um, sort out some structural reforms. Even with this additional aid in the form of grants, loans, and in the case of Kuwait oil, is this enough to plug the gap left by former President Morsi's decision to approve a 24.2% increase in borrowing to finance the budget deficit just days before he was deposed? The additional aid does buy the interim government some time. Um, it will be more of a stopgap than um, causing any structural improvements in the economy. Um, but the interim government does have a lot of leeway. Um, the security situation has improved. There's anecdotal evidence that power and food shortages have ended. So I think the general population will be more accommodative to the interim government and any financial difficulties they may face. Over the long term, however, um, unless well, well, we'll have to see subsidies reformed. Uh, this is going to need cutbacks in terms of food and fuel, which is going to hit the average Egyptian. And so I imagine we're going to see the return of protests um, or uh, popular unrest um, probably around this time next year after elections have been held. Edward, many thanks. Want to have your say on Egypt or any other matters discussed here on Dukascopy TV? Head to the Dukascopy TV Facebook page where you can share your views and see more exciting interviews. Goodbye for now.